Uh, did you know the number 12 was going to be starting? Oh, no. Nah, um, we, we heard some stuff about 13 possibly being injured, but uh, we were prepared for either quarterback to start. Uh, our, our scout report had 13 starting, but I don't really think it's, it's that much of a difference because, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to run the ball a lot, so they're just handing the ball to the running back. Amanda? I mean, I know it doesn't show anything in the record, but how much has it been? A lot. Um, just for example, tonight, you know, our, our D line and our linebackers, safeties, everybody did a great job. You know, our D line especially, just getting getting pressure on the quarterback, getting sacks. That's something we haven't really been doing a good job of this year, but we were able to do that today. And just the defense moving forward from here on out, it's going to be better. Just that, even after this year, because we, we have so few seniors on the defense that we're just going to be able to pick up and just continue to be good. Can you talk about how your mindset changes? Um, you know, with the field position when they get good field position. You know, Inside the tent a couple of times. Yeah. They had they started a couple of their drives, you know, inside your territory. What is what is does that change your mindset at all? Or? I'm uh, going into the game, we always have a set of goals on defense and one thing is no touchdowns after a sudden change. So it's 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 more like a challenge to the defense that if if the they, the, the offense has happened to give up the ball or something like that, then it's it's a challenge to the defense to step up and try to make up for them, give them the ball back so they can go and score. So it's it's a challenge we have just to, to not not let a touchdown after a sudden change. How important has your leadership been the last few weeks where certain things obviously happen off the field? Yeah. How, how important do you have to be as a leader? Uh, we, I'm, I'm just trying to keep the locker room tight, keep everybody together because, you know, there's there's plenty of guys on this team. If, if somebody goes down, whatever happens, the next person has to be able to step up. So I, I just try to tell, tell young guys just to whenever it's their time to go, they just have to be ready. What is the mood like? I mean, everybody understands that if if we didn't shoot ourselves in the foot tonight, we could have definitely gotten a win. We, we played toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys, and the penalties and the turnovers is what really hurt us. Just the little mistakes we made here here and there. So just we need to eliminate those going forward, and that will be a big thing if we can eliminate those mistakes. Right off the bat of the game, uh, I think first quarter of the game, because that's about 11 minutes. Yeah. Uh, do you guys feel like you maybe got worn down early or just, you know, not being able to have that offense on the field? Like, I mean, during, during practice, we always go quick tempo, no huddle, everything. Just just practicing for situations where we might be on the field for longer and everything. We're, we're, we're always conditioned, so we we just try to be be out there and just get everything we have. If if one guy gets tired, the next guy's gonna come in. So them having the ball really doesn't doesn't, doesn't do that much. And, uh, can you just talk about when you know thirteen came in quarterback late in the game? Yeah. It seemed like they were you know running a bunch of draws for him. Yeah. Uh, were you guys you know, it seemed like. Yeah, um, you know, a draw play, it's, it's either going to work or it's not. Like, if, if, if the D-line and the linebackers are rushing hard up the field, then there's naturally going to be running lanes for the quarterback on the draw. So, I mean, some some of the times they ran the draw work, sometimes it didn't. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. You've been uh, joined by Coach Bobby Ambrose. Coach, did you start with an opening statement? Then we'll open up for questions. Uh, uh, yeah. Get some rest. I want to thank the uh, fans, the alums, and in this case, especially the football alums that came back for this game. Uh, my hats are off to the seniors. And we talked, we spoke in the locker room that uh, the good and the bad, and that I wish we could have sent them out on a winning note. Uh, and we talked about why it wasn't a winning note. I wish them the best. They still got one more to finish, and I expect them to finish in the way that will well, re well represent Tiger Pride. Let them fly. Penalties? <laughs> yes, we had them. And they did too. Uh, you know, it. while I have been known to be somewhat exuberant in my analysis and displeasure during the game, I know those guys are only trying to do their best. Uh, I think it's awfully rare when there's over 20 penalties in a game uh, in the evaluative of that. We'll discuss that more after I watch the film. I'd say that's an abnormally high number for Pop Warner. And it was equally balanced. So draw your own conclusions. Uh, is that a point of emphasis though in the huddle? The, I mean, in terms of the, uh, the uh, not, not only the motion, but the illegal uh, too many, not just too many men in the huddle. Too many men in the huddle. Oh, oh, they, they just, just, 
The substitution the formation penalties too. Uh, there, as far as I'm aware, on for us, there was one where we didn't huddle, and one guy doesn't come out. So because we don't huddle, you can actually call a penalty before the guy gets out, saying that there are 12 men on the field. Discussionary point for the rule changes in the future. Uh, and then there was another one. There was a toss on their boundary that uh, evidently the ruling on the field says that our X receiver was not on the ball. That's what it says. That's what they said. You know, with the, with the personal fouls and the, and the holdings and stuff like that, is that just all mental? Uh, no, I'm going to tell you that you, of all the penalties that you saw today, personal foul was the least. Right. Okay. Um, and which is actually a good sign. And it, to be honest, that's, you know, every year you hear something from the officials about a point of emphasis and that the, um, the head is, you know, yeah. the concussions and all this stuff. And that, this, I get to talk a little bit, so I'm just going to say this. I remember when I played, uh, we didn't have NASA induced helmets, and the helmets actually stayed on people's heads, and we didn't have as many concussions. So I would really like to evaluate the helmet industry. I think for all the talk about hitting with your head and uh, all that good stuff, you ask the guys that played in the 60s when they had suspension helmets, they didn't have these issues. They didn't have them. So it, that is what it is. You guys had, even with all the penalties and the turnovers, you still found yourself with the ball in the fourth quarter down by eight points with a chance. What does that say about your team to just hang in there? One, if we don't keep the damn defense on the field for the entire game like we did last week, then we actually have an opportunity to win in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, the kids are resilient. That's what we talked about in the locker room, that they play hard, they play for each other, they play with a lot of trust and love and energy, and, and they're going to finish what they started, which is a nice statement. But until they play with more discipline during the moment, with assignment, schematic, and technical discipline in what they're doing, they're not going to get over the hump. That's going to be the problem. We, you know, we can get them to play hard, and get them to play for each other, and get them to finish what they started. But until they become more disciplined in their technique and their scheme, they're going to have a hard time winning those games. We left too many points on the field, too many easy opportunities. You know. When did you find out about the uh, quarterback switch for Maine? Uh, I did not find out the quarterback switch for Maine until approximately 24 minutes before the game started. Really? Yes. Did that change? Which, which no, not really. But I found it most interesting because Jack and I are friends and I found out approximately two minutes after I was done talking with him in which he said nothing. <laughs> uh, we all play with our cards close to the best, I guess. Uh, Bart's first interception that was taken down to the two. Um, was that the screen? No, it was not. It was a, a check down? No, it was a quick out that was tipped by a tackle. Okay. Uh, and honestly, technique of the moment. You're supposed to cut the last edge rusher. We didn't cut him, so his hands were up. He tips the ball, they return it. And that's, you know, I, you'd say it's the, that's the, the play of the game. That's the swing. But yeah. Would like to have a field goal earlier in the game. You know, points, points there in any fashion don't equal points for them in approximately three more plays. So, uh, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Poor discipline in the moment. And it might be hard to tell with or it's pick six without seeing the tape, but was it just a misread or? No, it was, it was the correct read. It was poor technique by the right offensive tackle, and it was a poor route by the right tight end. They, they did what they were supposed to do. They didn't do it how they were supposed to do it. How's that? It's pretty disciplined. Hey, it's a pretty straightforward answer you're getting right there after the game. It was in my eyesight. I can see it all. Okay. Well, I don't know one of the things you weren't happy with last week was the drop passes, and I know. Second half didn't drop as many. Not as many, but we still had. Uh, you, if you take the drop passes from the last two games, I bet we could add four games, five games earlier in the season where we didn't drop that many passes total if we added them all up. And to be honest, it's drive killers, stupid. I mean, we're not asking these kids to make spectacular catches. You know, Ryan Hanley's he, he one hands the ball. And if he puts the other hand up, it's fine. I'm not blaming Ryan. I mean, Ryan's done more for this program than probably any three players, play, and he's played all the positions out there. But that's, that's the discipline in the moment. And the eye discipline of following the ball all the way in your hands is an issue. And until, until that becomes a point of emphasis, not, not from a coach to a player, but from a player to himself, they're going to have a hard time being successful. I know you're not a big stats guy, and I know, you know the records this year kind of might be a little similar, but I was brought up that 
for the fourth time this year, you guys outgained an, an opponent and lost. I mean, mm -hmm. as far as total yards go, I mean, do you see progress right now? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, you know, I don't want to use too much derogative terminology, but last year, we sucked. You know what I mean? We, we were getting destroyed week after week after week. We weren't getting beat. We were getting destroyed. We were being physically manhandled. We're in the, you know, we're not winning the fight, but we're in the fight. You know, the difference between being knocked down by Tyson and 30 seconds into the fight, which everybody remembers, or actually going 15 rounds and losing. Now, screw it. I'm going to still flip tables and kick the dog because I don't want to lose. I'm serious, and the kids don't either. I got a locker room full of crying guys. Because they know that a year ago, we were getting manhandled. And now, we're in the fight with a chance to win. So is there progress? Hell yeah, there's progress. But it's not, you know. My wife sits in the back of this room. She knows I'm a very hard man. Please. So, yeah, it seems like, you know, this, you know, as we're talking about this team getting better, it seems like the defense is way ahead of the offense. What does it take to have for the offense, you know, to that is get up to speed? In the, in the normal progression of a team, in the changeover and the progress of a team, that is the natural course of events. That it is easier to get 11 guys together to run to the football schematically, intelligently. That takes, it's a different style of discipline. So defenses are always better and it goes to when you start spring ball the first couple days, the first five days of spring practice, the defense usually kills the offense. First five to ten days of summer practice, the defense kills the offense because there's a, there's a cohesiveness that an offense needs to be successful. And truly, and this is, here's the best analysis. If one guy does a great job on defense, it's a great play. If one guy on offense doesn't do his job, the play does not work. It truly takes 11 guys on offense. So to gain that cohesiveness and it, I want to say uh, we almost played with four out of five redshirt freshman offensive linemen. So um, last year we just played with whoever. <laughs> no, but I mean, so I, you know, it's not the cohesiveness I was exactly looking for at the moment, but it is gaining in some degree. Uh, not nearly good enough. The defense will always be ahead, then comes special teams, then comes the offense. To go along with that cohesiveness, there's kind of like a continuity thing. You said the seniors, had, you know, earlier in the week, you said that the seniors had seen a lot of transition and things like that. But now the young guys are kind of growing together and kind of, you know, the freshmen and sophomores are getting on the field more. They're seeing more action. Mm -hmm. I mean, how is that, that going to help you later on? Sure. I mean, the more it, as with the older guys that played or the younger guys, it doesn't really matter. The more you play, the more experience you get, the better you're going to be, period. Um, the, the fine line you walk when you play with young guys is that you don't want them to be hurt. We're, you know, after next week, we're about to transition into what everybody calls the off season. But Division One football is a 12-month endeavor, and it's the most critical time. They're going to lift their face off, eat their face off, and they're going to sweat together in rooms that you won't see and you won't be able to interview them. And they will make their best growth in the t in the span of a year that will show up again for next fall. So uh, there's a whole lot that goes into that cohesion and chemistry, and uh, 